Are you ready to know some of the mysterious rapture signs happening in Israel? These terrifying signs have captured the world's attention. So, what's really happening in the Holy Land? What could these signs mean for the future? Let's dive into this video to know the reality. The first rapture sign is the reconstruction of the Third Temple and its ceremony. The Third Temple is a special place that people want to build in Jerusalem. It's more important than the old temples that got destroyed. Even though it hasn't been built yet, it's very important in Judaism, especially for Orthodox Jews. They believe it's the holiest place for them to worship. In the Hebrew Bible, the prophets wanted this new temple to be built when the Messiah came. Some Christians also think it's important for the end of the world. But there's a problem. The place where they want to build the third temple is also where Muslims have a special building called the Dome of the Rock. So there's a big argument about it. During the reconstruction, an ancient temple was discovered beneath Temple Mount. An unexpected discovery in 1927 changed people's beliefs about the Temple Mount site. A powerful earthquake damaged the Al-Aqsa Mosque. To fix it, the Muslim YKF allowed some investigations in the area. Robert Hamilton, an archaeologist and Muslim clerics teamed up to research where the mosque had collapsed. However, Hamilton had to be careful not to upset the Muslim community, so he didn't reveal all his findings. Surprisingly, many of his discoveries were from times before Muslim rule, like the Second Temple and Byzantine eras. These findings remained hidden for a long time, but are now coming to light. Almost 80 years later, Israeli archaeologists Dr. Gabi Barkai and Zachi Devira revisited Hamilton's hidden findings. They carefully examined tons of earth removed from the Temple Mount about 13 years ago. They found many small archaeological items on this earth that tell us more about Jerusalem's history. One of their discoveries was a Jewish mikveh, a ritual pool from the Second Temple era. It was probably used by Jews before going into the temple grounds. They also found many small items from the times of the First and Second Temples. Hamilton's findings included parts of a Byzantine mosaic beneath the mosque's floor. Devira discovered mosaic stones, pieces of columns, and evidence of a Byzantine-era church from 324 to 638 CE in the earth from the Temple Mount. These findings challenge what people used to think. They suggest that the Temple Mount wasn't empty during the Byzantine era and might have had structures, like churches at that time. The construction is underway, and a special ceremony for the Third Temple on October 12th took place recently. In the ceremony, they did a tradition with water. Many people joined in, including priests and Levites. They chanted, danced, and played music along old paths. At Shylock, they used a golden jug to collect water and returned to the mountain's top. They set up a model altar and special tools, just like they used to do in the ancient temple. The ceremony ended with a special blessing and another ceremony that happens every seven years. Even though the Torah, a holy book, doesn't say they have to do this water ceremony, it's part of a tradition. People see it as a happy holiday. In the temple, this ceremony would last for 15 hours and they would keep celebrating all night until the next morning. People from different countries participated in the Sukkot celebrations, making it an international day of worship. They did this water ceremony for the last six days of the Sukkot holiday and poured wine during the morning service. The Kohanim filled a flask with spring water and went from the temple to the Shelok Spring at the bottom of Mount Moriah. Then, two Kohanim went up to the stone altar in the temple's inner courtyard and poured wine and water into special holes for this ceremony. Besides the third temple, another scary prophecy happened. Scary trumpet sounds in the sky in Israel. In the middle of Israel, some strange and powerful sounds echoed, puzzling many people, including the army and police. These loud booms and strong vibrations were felt in places like Gush Dan, Tel Aviv, and Petah Tikva, even reaching Julis, 50 kilometers away. Similar weird sounds, known as sky trumpets or sky quakes, have been reported worldwide, including in the United States, Canada, Costa Rica, Russia, the Czech Republic, and Australia. These sounds are new, unusual, and eerie, often resembling groaning noises, metallic vibrations, and even unclear voices. Some people wonder if these sounds hold important meaning, perhaps signaling the end of the world. They draw connections to biblical stories mentioning trumpets. In the book of Revelation, there are stories about seven trumpets blown by angels, signaling significant and frightening events foreseen by John of Patmos in his dreams. These trumpets, called salpix, salpinx in Greek, were made of bronze and looked different from modern trumpets. The last three trumpets, known as the woe trumpets, are particularly important as they announce distressing events in the stories. 
these trumpet sounds carry deep significance in the narratives, amplifying the importance of the events described in the Book of Revelation. And after that, recently, a marriage took place in Temple Mount. Jeremiah chapter 33 verse 11 has a prophecy about a joyful time with the voice of joy and the voice of gladness. It represents the happiness connected to a future Messiah and the Third Temple. Lately, in Israel, more Jewish people visit the Temple Mount, believing it's a sign of the Messiah's coming. Aitan Krantman and Coral Daisy Dean from Rehovot and Tel Mond got engaged on the Temple Mount. Aitan gave Coral an engagement ring there with other Jewish witnesses present. This practice is becoming more common among Jewish couples. Traditional Jewish marriages have two stages, Kiddushin, Betrothal, and Nisuin, Wedding. Aitan and Coral did the Kiddushin part by giving a valuable ring in front of two witnesses. This differs from ancient customs that separated these stages. They highlighted a special blessing during the wedding ceremony, emphasizing the creation of humanity in God's image and the idea of an everlasting establishment. They want their marriage to symbolize a lasting union and the presence of a building on the Temple Mount. This moment on the Temple Mount connects to a verse from Jeremiah, often recited at weddings, which speaks of joy and thanksgiving in the towns of Yehuda and Yerushalayim, linked to the land's restoration. The Temple Mount has historical gates for bridegrooms and mourners, later known as the Gate of Mercy, adding more meaning to the location. Jewish couples believe their actions on the Temple Mount bring the prophecies in Jeremiah 33 to life. Similarly, Zechariah chapter 8 verses 20 to 22 prophecies people from various cities coming to Jerusalem to pray to the Lord. Jewish individuals see these events as fulfilling ancient prophecies and view them with awe. Also, the arrival of red heifers also happened as prophesied. The appearance of five red heifers in Israel has grabbed global attention, especially among Christians who believe in biblical prophecy. These heifers are important because they meet the rules in Numbers 19 for a proper sacrifice. They must be red and without blemishes. Many Christians believe that a third temple will be built in Jerusalem during the end times. The presence of these red heifers in Israel has led to speculation about this prophecy coming true. The book of Numbers gives clear instructions about the red heifer. God tells the Israelites to find an unblemished red heifer that has never worked. They sacrifice and burn it outside the camp, adding cedar wood, hyssop, and scarlet yarn to the fire. The ashes from this are mixed with pure water. The red heifer offering is meant to purify people who have encountered a dead body. The water with the ashes is sprinkled on the person on the third and seventh days of their purification using hyssop. The priest who performs this ritual becomes impure and must purify himself and his clothes in flowing or living water until evening. Jewish tradition says these ashes are crucial for purifying Jews to serve in the temple. Over about 1,000 years, only nine red heifers were used during the times of the first and second temples. Tradition holds that the tenth will be used by the Messiah. To make this happen, the Temple Institute and an Israeli cattleman are using modern science to implant frozen embryos of Red Angus cattle into Israeli domestic cattle. Different communities see the arrival of the Red Heifers in various ways. Some Orthodox Jews in Israel see it as a step toward restoring Temple services, even before the Third Temple is built. Others emphasize the importance of Jerusalem as God's chosen place and the future restoration of a house of prayer for all nations as mentioned in Isaiah chapter 56 verse 7. They see the potential use of these heifers in reinstating temple services as a significant development. What do you think of these rapture signs happening in Israel? Comment below and subscribe for more.